Hello and thank you all for joining us. You're watching Addis News Hour with the news. I'm Tabitha John. Do stay with us. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed announces that Dine for Ethiopia initiative has been able to raise 4.2 billion birr. The Prime Minister made the remark during the Dine for Ethiopia dinner program he hosted yesterday. Dine for Ethiopia is an initiative launched by the Prime Minister last August to mobilize funds for the Koisha, Wanji and Gorgora projects. The Premier said on the occasion that the amount exceeds the initial plan of raising 3 billion birr as Ethiopians in and out outside the country eagerly participated in the campaign. To all Ethiopians in the country and abroad that have enabled a successful Dine for Ethiopia through their contribution, I thank you deeply, the Premier tweeted. In unity, we shall reach our aspired destination, he added. The three projects that will be executed in Oromia, Amhara and Southern Regional States are expected to create jobs for the local communities, drive tourism and create service economies. Prime Minister Rabi Ahmed has today launched the first phase construction of the Koisha National Project located in the southern state. The Premier on the occasion described the Koisha area, particularly Halalakilla, where the first cluster will be executed as a captivating place with dynamic history and culture. I was fortunate to have visited Koisha for the first time last year, where I witnessed its immense untapped potential. Following a year of extensive studies and fundraising, to develop the area. I am quite pleased to be back in the area on the fortnight of Dine for Ethiopia to launch the Halalakela cluster of the project in Dauro Zone, the Premier wrote on Facebook. Addressing the gatherings upon his arrival, Prime Minister Abi said attraction sites like Koisha should be developed and revealed to the rest of the world to better promote Ethiopia. Prime Minister Abi expressed optimism that the project will be completed with Within a year, calling regional government officials and other stakeholders to follow up the progress, thereby contribute to the effective completion of the initiative. The Premier, together with Minister of Health Dr. Liat Haddisa, laid a foundation stone for the Konta Field Hospital, which is an integral part of the development project of the Dan for Ethiopia initiative. The field hospital, which will be completed in two months and equipped with modern medical equipment, is intended to make health services accessible to the community and to visitors to the area it was learned. The Ethiopian Diaspora Agency says it has collected over 27 million birr from Ethiopians living abroad for the Dine for Ethiopia program. This is in addition to the previously raised 400 million birr by the Ethiopian Diaspora to lend a hand to the internally displaced people over the past two years. Director of the Ethiopian Diaspora Agency told ETV that the diaspora community is in a suitable position to back the ongoing reform in Ethiopia. Alula Teklamariam reports. May 2019 saw the launch of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's highly successful Dine for Sugar initiative that mobilized funds for city projects to improve Addis Ababa's tourism potential. Within a year, the refurbishment of both Sugar and Indoto Parks was complete. The Ethiopian diaspora is regarded as a dependable force to back the country's reform, given its immense potential and exposure. Established to help this grand aim succeed, the Ethiopian Diaspora Agency is organizing a host of events and generally urging the diaspora to pitch in for ongoing initiatives by the government. The agency said it has collected over 27 million per from Ethiopians living abroad for the Dine for Ethiopia program. Uh, Dine information or Gabbat al uh, projects were, you know, very interesting projects for diaspora. They loved it very much. They, they try to contribute uh, what they can do for it in, in idea and in, in cash. The contribution, the amount of contribution is until now. We started the, the mobilization for the project uh, within this last three months. So within this last three months, they, their contribution been like 27 million Ethiopian per. 
So uh, we are also, you know, uh, try to uh, to give them uh, opportunity to participate to, to participate in the dinner program. Ten of them will be participating. Uh, eight up to ten. Yes, yes, yes. We give them this opportunity to participate here. Uh, so the prime minister office give uh, a ticket and. Uh, accommodations uh, opportunity for them uh, so that they can come here and you know uh, witness what's going on on 16th august 2020 the dine for ethiopia program was launched it hopes to mobilize funds for three projects in gorgora wenchi and koja the new initiative aims to raise three billion bur within two months Salamoit underscored that over 400 million bur was collected from the diaspora for the rehabilitation of people who have been internally displaced over the past two years. Including this uh, national uh, project, we, they also contributed uh, for uh, the people who have been uh, disrupted for, because of the uh, rural, rural enforcement in yeah. our uh, yeah. you know, northern part of uh, Ethiopia. Yeah. They've been contributed uh, for uh, for about 400 million bur. Oh, right. Yeah, that that was that was the reason you know the Gavata al get only 27 million because this happens yeah. in the middle of this yeah. uh, uh, mobilization. Uh, yes. The agency further called upon the diaspora to maintain their support and leave their legacy <coughs> in Ethiopia's multifaceted progress. Prime Minister Rabi Ahmed and Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Damak Amakonin have expressed condolences over the death of Loret Tebaba Yemane Burhan, who served his country at various levels, including leadership in the health sector. Prime Minister Rabi Ahmed extended a message of condolence for the beloved ones and the deceased of all. Ethiopians. The Prime, Deputy Prime Minister Damek Amakona, for his part, wishes comfort to the family, colleagues, and beloved ones of the late Dr. Tababa Yemane Burhan. The House of People's Representatives has also extended condolences on the death of the late Dr. Yemane Burhan, who was conferred with the title of laureate for his great contributions in the health sector. The late Dr. Tababa Yemane Burhan was a world renowned dermatologist. Without a historical memory, it's like a person without a head. Over a century ago, the Ethiopian people and the national leadership united like one person to defeat the foreign power that I had to take over Ethiopia. The victory of Agawa is a victory that united a nation, the people, and the leadership. <laughs> Internally, all the varied groups from Oromia to Eritrea were mobilized and contributed richly to the success of the Adwa victory by all Ethiopians through the depth and breadth of the land. This was not a victory of the leaders or, or, or one ethnic group. This was a national victory with a wider African and indeed world significance. It was and remains an exemplary episode in demonstrating what a united people can achieve with the support of the African diaspora and the anti-colonial forces in the West. Ethiopian scholars criticize the very little attention Ethiopia gives to the victory of Adwam. Including such proud histories under the country's education curriculum will help create a generation with a big winning mentality, they advised. Kazahun Jani tells us more. <laughs> The 
Countries include the unique historical and social heritage under their education curriculum to boost people's understanding and love towards their country. Though blessed with many historical heritage, Ethiopia fell short to expose its generation to the amazing and proud histories like Adwa. According to scholars, teaching children of their country's proud events would strengthen unity and uplift their spirit. In an exclusive interview with TV Amharic in connection with the Adwa, a victory. Alema Kufle, lecturer at the Kotobi Metropolitan University, said Adwa teaches an invaluable lesson to the current generation. Despite the victory, has been given less emphasis in the country's education curriculum. The country's decisive historical moments are not included in the education curriculum. There is only one history course that depicts the victory of Adwa. We Ethiopians do not give due attention to Adwa even compared with the emphasis that other African nations and black Americans paid to the victory. The Adwa victory is not worth more than a one-day event in Ethiopia. We ignored our wills, but... In reality, Adwa can be used as a cornerstone to strengthen unity and build a proud nation. Jamaluddin Mufta, a lecturer at Magdalamba University, on his part stated that Ethiopians failed to make proper use of the victory of Adwa to create a generation with that winning mentality. Adwa is a the victory of Adwa has been given diminutive place. There must have been libraries, research institutions in the name of Adwa. Where heroes of Adwa should have had place with their names, Adwa can lift up our winning mentality. If you are able to produce a generation with that winning mentality, then it would not relent to foreign with donations. According to the scholars, the present generation should make strong efforts in drawing a lesson from the forefathers to play a share in building a democratic and prosperous nation. Besides, they said that the history of Adwa is in conviction resistance to any form of humiliation. Ethiopians of all ranks and files never hesitate to include this great history and the curriculum system in a broadening sense. The victory of Adwa was not only a victory of a battlefield, but a victory over racism. The remark came during an exclusive interview ETV had with an Ethiopian assistant professor of history, Ababao Ayaleo. Ababao says Adwa was an engine for the entire black people around the globe to stand for freedom. Jerusalem Betha interviewed the scholar and has filed the following report. <laughs> In 1896, fascist Italians were eyeing Ethiopia, having designed tricky plans to colonize the country, while other European countries had already scrambled the rest of Africa. However, Ethiopia had successfully defended its independence, and as such, Ethiopians became a beacon of hope for other African countries that were under colonial occupation, assistant professor of history at Addis Ababa University, Ababa Yalu, said. Otherwise, um a victory which uh, echoed uh, beyond uh, Ethiopia's horizon, uh, particularly for the rest of Africa. Uh, the year uh, 1896 was a year in which most of the African peoples were under colonial occupation. Some of them were ruled for uh, 30 years, some of them for 20 years, and uh, some of them for five or eight years. That was uh, a period in which colonialism oppressed Africans in its fresh force, new force. So it was during this particular time that uh, Adwa just uh, gave uh, a light and a hope for uh, most of Africans that, look, this is uh, something that can be, uh, you know, that, that will not last long. So in terms of uh, becoming an example for uh, the later African uh, nationalist and liberation movements, it has played an immense role. And then uh, its importance for um, the black population in the entire world. According to the scholar, Adwa became an inspiration among Africans to be united for Pan-Africanism movement. Therefore, Ethiopia's role was remarkable for that initiative. In 
Uh, beginning from the 1880s, there was um, a quest among Africans for unity at regional levels. In Eastern Africa, there were attempts to uh, unify the resistance against uh, the Germans or the English. Uh, in West Africa also, uh, to some extent. But later on, you see, uh, during the uh, liberation uh, uh, movement, that was uh, in the 1940s, 50s, 60s, the need for uh, a united uh, African movement became clear. And Ethiopia's reference of uh, playing a leading role in that movement emanates from Adwa. And others respected Ethiopia's involvement and leadership because of references like uh, Adwa. Many historians say that the victory of Adwa was not simply to defeat Italy, but it was against European imperialism. Avivo agrees that saying Adwa as a manifestation of equality among human beings. One way or the other, uh, the victory of Adwa was a victory over racism. It was a victory over uh, uh, European uh, philosophy of uh, uh, men are not created equal and uh, their own race is superior. So after almost uh, nine years, that was repeated also uh, in uh, Eastern Asia when the Japanese defeated the Russian army in 1904. So absolutely, uh, uh, when we think of um, the uh, victory of Adwa, uh, I agree to the point that Adwa is not a victory over colonialist military forces, and it was not uh, simply a military uh, victory, and uh, rather it is a victory of uh, equality over uh, inequality, a victory over uh, racism. On February 8, 2021, a month-long celebration of the 125th Adwa victory was launched to commemorate Ethiopian sacrification for safeguarding Ethiopia's sovereignty and to symbolize Adwa as a national pride, freedom to Africans and the black people around the globe. A prominent historian, Adam Kamil, pronounced the victory of Adwa as the first landmark in the struggle of Africans for freedom and the Pan-African movement. Emmanuel Jogia reports. One hundred twenty-five years ago, Ethiopians did unexpected and wonderful exploit against colonialism by defeating the then modern fascist Italians in unity. Historian Adam Kamil said that the inception point of struggle to liberate Africa and Pan-Africa movement is the victory of Adwa. The first struggle to liberate Africa began in the Battle of Adwa. Ethiopia has trained freedom fighters and Pan-Africanists like Nelson Mandela to liberate their country from colonizers. Due to that, Ethiopia played a great role in the Pan-African movement, being called Father of Africa's Liberty. Africa Union's headquarters is built in Addis Ababa because of all these factors, not incidentally. <laughs> Adam pointed out that the victory have bold lessons for both Ethiopia and Egypt on the issue of Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. 
The victory of Adoa has a lesson for Ethiopia that we are powerful when we are united. And another lesson for Egypt as of the saying, someone who has a house made of glass does not throw a stone to others. If Egypt is thinking of demolishing the guard, do Egyptians forget that they also have Aswan Dam in Cairo? All Ethiopians are ready to sacrifice their life for guard because they built it from their own pocket. They want to get rid of backwardness and poverty. أما عندك أنت سد أسوان He added that daring to attack Ethiopia while Ethiopia did nothing against them is a transgression against the teachings of Islam taught by Prophet Muhammad. ثم أي اعتدال الحبشة هو Thinking to venture Ethiopia is trying to transgress Prophet Muhammad's commandment saying do not touch Ethiopians since they do not touch you. Haven't you seen what happened to Muhammad Mursi? He was overthrown from his position within two months after he passed five wrong decisions about Ethiopia.